Hi folks, so today I am going to be talking about why I don't like YouTube Reason 347. Uh, but before I get into that video, uh, I am perfectly well aware that the monitor from my computer is reflecting like crazy off my glasses today. It's late and I've had a long day so I'm not going to worry about it, but uh, feel free to point it out in the comment section if you so wish. Um, some of you folks may have already heard about this, uh, but today I am going to be talking about YouTube showing ads uh, on videos, even if the content creator has not signed up to the YouTube Partner Program. Now, for those of you that don't know, the YouTube Partner Program is the monetization program for YouTube. Once you have a certain number of views and a certain number of subscribers, you then become eligible to sign up to um, get a share of the advertising revenue from ads run on your videos. For the last, I don't know, best part of a year, I have not run ads on my channel. Some of you may not have noticed because you may very well watch my videos on uh, another platform like Invidious or Peertube, um, where I don't run ads on them anyway. And also, you may very well, of course, be using an ad blocker. I would imagine uh, quite a few people who do watch this channel uh, do use an ad blocker. I've always suspected that the like when I was earning advertising revenue from YouTube ads, it was people who might be watching my content on a like a TV or something, um, you know, like like or or, or the, the mobile app, which um, which sort of doesn't really facilitate like ad blocking particularly. Um, but yeah, so yeah, this is the article on Forbes. I've got it up on the screen right now, of course. Um, but yeah, YouTube just changed its rules on monetize on policy. I'll put a link to it in the description. It really sort of covers everything that I said here, and then it sort of includes the actual clause in the terms of service, uh, the right to monetize, as uh, YouTube says. And um, yeah, like I'm a little bit ticked off. Like I do bear in mind, you know, like I do sort of understand that YouTube is a private company, Google is a private company, Alphabet is a private company, they can do what they want on their platform and it does kind of sort of uh, suck in the way that YouTube do seem to be the de facto default place for content on the internet. YouTube still do offer a lot for free, they let any content creator make content about nearly any subject and then just provide a place on the internet to, to host it with very few st strings attached, although more and more st strings seem to be being attached as time goes on. Um, but yeah, it's a... This one's a little bit annoying, because I, I, I decided to demonetize my channel, and um, and now it seems like it's all for nothing. I'm not, I'm not going to sign back up to the YouTube Partner Program, uh, so any adverts that you do watch I don't get a penny of, so, you know, for all I care, use an ad blocker. Um, and I, I I have chewed over the idea of doing a video about, like, you know, ad blocking, does it hurt creators, does it not? Uh, and, and I think, by and large, it, it kind of does, if we're completely honest. Like, I think about 80% of my views on this channel come from people who are not subscribed to the channel. It's all well and good saying, well, support people on Patreon, support, you know, people on, on Libra Pay and all this kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, a very small percentage of people actually do. Um, PayPal, uh, Patreon doesn't make it easy because the minimum you can pledge is like a dollar a month and like most channels do not make content worth a dollar a month. Like the stuff that goes on this channel, it is not worth a dollar a month, right? Like it's, you know, and that's what I like about LibraPay and that's why I've, I've got a LibraPay account in, in some ways is you can like toss me a few pennies a month, uh, a few pennies a week um, or a month if you wanted to, you know, and like that's something that's a bit more like fine, do you know what I mean? But like you know, having as the the price of entry as being like a, a dollar a month, you know, if that was like a you know, you, if that was a subscription for something, um, like on the telly or something, you know, like I'm subscribed just just to put it into perspective, I'm subscribed to about 400 channels on YouTube. Like I watch quite a lot of YouTube. Obviously, I don't watch every video that every one of those 400 ch ch channels puts out. Some are like music channels that will release three videos a year. Um, some of them are like you know news commentary channels that will release like four videos a day. Um, you know, so I'm going to watch, you know, it's what I watch is, is, is going to be very scattered. But um, if I were to support on, on Patreon every single one of the channels that I watch on YouTube, I'd be putting forward $400, or something like 300 quid British pounds a month. That's a lot more than a, 
that's a lot more than than a very high cable that's, that's a massive cable bill that's that's you, you got to throw a lot of pay-per-view boxing in to get to 300 uh 400 dollars a month so um and and to be and like i say like 80 percent of my views i would say come from non-subscribers no one who's just like passing you know no passing trade no one who's just like coming through watching one or two videos from a channel and moving on is going to is going to subscribe to a patreon it sort of it, it encourages YouTubers and content creators to amass a cult following. That's not healthy uh, in order to, to, to monetize. Uh, so, you know, whereas, whereas you can say like, you know, and, 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 and you see it on Twitch as well, where they're like, they're turning Twitch streamers into like, like televangelists almost, where it's like sub trains and hype trains, and all this nonsense. And it, it fosters a very money centric culture that I, I find very, uh, very unattractive, if I'm completely honest. Um, so it, it, this has kind of prompted me to make a video in, in, in a certain capacity rather than just have a bit of a moan about YouTube, right? We could all moan about YouTube to the cows come home. YouTube is as YouTube does, right? They do actually offer a lot for free. And I'm actually very grateful for YouTube for actually giving me the platform for growing as a, as a content creator. So they, to me, they still have done more good than bad, right? Easy as it is to moan at, at, at Google and YouTube. But I don't like the fact now that like, you know, they, they seem to have backpedaled on, on this issue. And like I say, you know, my content is on their platform. They can run as if they want. Um, but, uh, and, and uh, so I thought today uh, might be a, a good day to, uh, to just let you guys know, and I'm sure many of you already do know, that I actually put up my content on a platform called Peertube. So you can see that my Peertube account is down there just in the... Uh, it's all backwards on the screen there there right down there right this 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 down here so if you go if you're on like mastodon or plarima you can just type in at chrisware at share dot dot tube and it'll come up with what looks like another account you can follow that account videos will come up in your feed just like that um you can also follow me on on mastodon anyway i tend to like boost out my videos anyway uh, on share tube um, or if you just want to watch my videos through a web browser, you can just go to share.tube. You can just go to share.tube. Most like you'll find a lot of my videos on, on the front page of ShareTube because it is just one instance of, of PeerTube. And that's the thing I like about PeerTube. It is a, it's kind of like it works similar to what like WordPress, whereas you have a server, you install the software to, to showcase your videos and then people can watch and subscribe and do everything with your videos on your own platform. It's really good. Um, and to me, like it's, it's, it's the game changer, right? Sometimes people ask me to put content up on like LBRY, but I, I tried our LBRY. It's first of all, it's not a great user experience. Uh, second of all, um, it is centralized, which is part of the same problem that YouTube has. Like it's all in one place and being centralized isn't always a bad thing. Like you've got that one point of contact. That's really good. But and, and and discoverability is much better on a centralized platform. Like discoverability on PeerTube is is difficult. I know that the company that developed the software, Framasoft, uh, are actually hoping to like increase. You know, that's like something they're hoping to improve on this year. Um, but to be honest, at this point, I've tried almost every alternative to YouTube under the sun, and none of them even come close to cutting the mustard. Some of them sell themselves in different ways. Some of them sell themselves as like anti censorship, but um, that ends up usually falling flat on its face because you just get the people that have been booted off other social networks there, and then you've you've, you've suddenly got, you know you're suddenly surrounded by people of, who make up these mad conspiracy theories and you know tend to have rather bigoted views and stuff like that, and it can be a bit like you know not a nice place to make your content. Basically, I don't you know like I'm I'm not making any kind of political statement when I say this, but if you're just on a platform that is largely shared by racists and nutters, it's not fun. It's not fun for me. It's not, do you know what I mean? Like it loses its appeal. I like being part of a community of, of, of people who are nice and creative and constructive and open sourcey. And that's what, what's what Peertube is. And Peertube's got, you know, like, um, it, you know, it, it, because you host your own content in that way and you form these nice, nice little communities that, that interlock, uh, it, it's easy to sort of moderate and manage your content in a way that, is autonomous so you don't have the 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 big you know tech companies deciding what is and isn't acceptable speech and all that kind of stuff but at the same time you also don't let nutters run riot you know you've got that nice like 
um, that nice sort of middle ground that is, um, you know, like where you have autonomy over your content and you 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 get to, um, you know, yeah, you get a little bit more autonomy over it, and 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 you as as viewers get a lot more autonomy over how you view content as well. You know, if you want to go off and watch the nutters, you can do it as well. You know, like, but 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 it doesn't necessarily have to impact on me as a content creator. That's great. That's the ideal solution, right? Um, also, with ShareTube, um, you can also subscribe to RSS feeds. So you know, that's great. Uh, I believe the there is a um, yeah the the Android app New Pipe, uh, which is like uh, you can subscribe to YouTube channels. You can also subscribe to PeerTube channels on it as well. Uh, so that's that's pretty cool, uh, and it has uh, an interesting way where. Um, you can actually sort of monetize the content, but what happens is that you've got your little, you know, you've got your little screen, your little window that you view the, the video, and then it's got like a little button that says support down beneath it. You click on the support button, and then it will uh, take you to links of places where you can support the creator. So it could be like Patreon, Subscribestar, or in my case, LiberaPay, um, or even just a website, you know, or a GoFundMe or whatever it is. Right? You get to choose your own monetization options with PeerTube. Which is great. That's amazing. Because even if like Patre Patreon ain't, you know, they ain't exactly the best. You know, they, they they went from a we're here and cuddly and friendly to support content creators to we are now a Silicon Valley company like the rest of them. Or you know, they're sort of drifting in that direction. So you know, you do you get that control, which is amazing. You get that. The content creators get the control. The viewers get the control. Everyone's sort of like in control of their own environment and that's that's the best part of it right because i'm done with uh services that try and be youtube maybe youtube with the twist or something like that but fundamentally you've got a private company that is controlling all the content from a central location it's got to be better than youtube and they never are youtube is the best at what youtube does youtube is the best at centralized services don't try and fight youtube uh, on on its own ground it's it's like fighting a land war in asia it's just not going to go down well right <laughs> so um yeah like i i hate to say it because i know that there's a lot of people you know and and don't get me wrong youtube's like i i got a gaming video on my gaming channel super tux cart wonderful game multiplayer is amazing uh but it's a free and open source game and all the assets are not free or open source it got copyright claimed unbelievable it got copyright claimed friggin amazing um so don't get me wrong like um it, it, it it's uh you know, YouTube has its ups and downs, but at the end of the day, like, there is no other service that comes close to being better. It, there just isn't. It's not even... YouTube is, is you know, they're, they're good at what they do for 99% of people, 99% of the time. Um, you know, and, and with LBRY, like, it took me forever to do even sometimes the most basic of tasks. Like, that, they, they have one Electron app. To do the thing, they kept pushing me to use their Electron app. It wasn't, it wasn't nice. It wasn't a nice experience. And then they try and monetize it with their their cryptocurrency. I never managed to work out how to turn that into like actual money. I never, I didn't really try that hard. I know Gardner, uh, Gardner Bryant, the Linux gamer, ex Linux gamer. I don't know. He's cheated, but anyway, uh, he um, good channel though. I, I enjoy his content. Um, but yeah, basically like. Um, he's he's got a video where he tried to cash out. I don't know. Like the money's not that important to me. I think to be honest, I, if if all cards are on the table, I think YouTube would just be a better place if people just if if monetization just disappeared. You know, it would it would it would separate the people that want to be there from the people that are suckered in for the money. That's not to say that professional content doesn't have a place on the internet. Just you know, maybe Netflix or something. But YouTube made its name. Uh, cut its teeth, as it were, on you know community content and small content creators talking about things that they care passionately about. Not like that anymore. Now you know, did like it was. I think it was like Jack's Films. That's a good channel as well, but that's a bigger channel. And I think Jack's Films was asked like, what, what you know, what like he was commentating on like how YouTube has changed, and it's like ten years ago, you know, like a, a viral video used to be like a really cute cat falling over or. Or, um, or or Fenton. Does anyone remember Fent Fenton? Fenton. Fenton. Look up Fenton the dog. Right, great old man. Or or even uh, uh, do the Harlem Shake. You know stuff like that. That used to be what a viral video was, right? But now it's it's some rich kid buys their friend a Mercedes, and that's that's what a viral video is nowadays. It's kind of just like you know ruined everything. And I kind of actually see. 
I don't want to talk ill of you folks, but I kind of see like that old, st you know, that stuff in PeerTube now. Like PeerTube to me is what I wanted out of, uh, or what I want out of YouTube, to be honest. You know, maybe I don't get as many views, but if I'm completely honest, like I love the comments there. The comments there are like really good. Like, you know, like I say, not to speak ill of you guys in, 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 in YouTube land, but it's, you know, like take a look at the comments on the video of like Matrix versus XMPP in YouTube and take a look at the comments on Matrix versus XMPP in PeerTube, right? And like, there's quite, quite a bit of a difference there. It's not necessarily the same with every video, but like, I do genuinely feel that like with PeerTube, it fosters like a much greater sense of community. Like with a lot of comments with YouTube, for example, will be like new comments time and time again as well. So, and that might have something to do with the fact that because of most people don't discover me through their subscription feed, they discover me through like recommended videos or uh, through search engines and, you know, things like that, that people who comment on my video tend to like leave one comment and then I won't see them again for three months. And you don't have that same feeling in community because so few people leave comments regularly by comparison to like PeerTube, where I will re recognize like seven out of 10 of the people who leave comments there. It just, you know, it just feels differently. It just feels differently. Um, and, and maybe the fact that it's smaller actually kind of is, is a good thing for me. Like, do you ever n not notice, right? How, like, you know, and, and I like the Fediverse, I like Mastodon, I love all that stuff. Have you ever realized how ridiculous it is when people talk about, like, these, like, Mastodon and PeerTube and all this kind of stuff, when they say, like, well, there aren't as many people on it, you got to go where the people are. It's like, do I? Do I really? Like, if there's enough people to make it worthwhile how i feel that it's worthwhile then isn't isn't that enough right isn't 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 that enough if i enjoy being there if i enjoy doing content with it you know creation with it isn't isn't that enough and um uh, and, and in my opinion it is like it, it is like um it, Having a smaller community can mean that you, you have more camaraderie with the people who are on that platform. It can mean that you recognize people and build up relationships over time. There are people who, are, who I've built up relationships over time on the Fediverse. The only other platform I've ever done that on is, is YouTube. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I th I'm pretty sure. Like, there would be, yeah, I think so. You know, and uh, there might be like one or two exceptions in there, but really the place that's felt like a home to me Nowadays, it's the Fediverse, and and I'm not I'm not there because I'm pushing an open source agenda either. It just it hap it is open source, and that is something that's very attractive to me. But at the same time, it's fun. It's fun to make videos for PeerTube because it feels like I'm making videos for a community again. It's fun to to just mess around on uh, on Mastodon because it's like what social media was 15 years ago. Like it's like, it's just a place where you can kind of feel you can sort of let loose a little bit more. Like with someone like Twitter, for example, like I have to be on Twitter for work. Right. And it's, but it, that's kind of what it's become. It's become work. Like it's become that place where you have to put on that professional persona there. And I have to feel like whenever I'm on Twitter, I have to act like a professional. You know, and and with the uh, with Macedon and the Fediverse, I feel like I, it can be fun again. I just feel like you know, I don't have to sort of put on some sort of fake you know avatar and fake name and all that kind of thing to to actually feel like I can be myself. Like I can just you know post jokes and 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 memes and stuff like that and without you know in in a space that genuinely feels you know recreational. So anyway, I've got like a couple of like exclusive videos over there that are like proper rambles proper rambles right now um so and i think i will be doing a fair amount of, of peer tube exclusive content here on in that's not to say i will I, i'm going to stop doing stuff on youtube but like i've kind of you know got into a rhythm of doing a certain kind of video on youtube and it's not a video that's like this where i just talk about some random stuff of the day you know like a lot of what I talk about on this channel now is like I've, it's got a more direct point. Like it's got like a here's a piece of software I like. Here's a distribution I've been going on, um, and, and and that kind of feels like YouTube has sort of driven me towards in that direction. Um, whereas on PeerTube, there is no none of that. Like the only you know because you don't have the analytics and the algorithms and the and the culture that follows that. It's like, I might not necessarily care about the analytics and the algorithms, but everyone else, you know, so many other people on, on YouTube do as content creators, that you kind of get funneled in 
thinking like that. It's, it, and, and yeah, I like peer tube has kind of just allowed me to, I don't know, it's like rediscover why I make videos in the first place. And, and that's, that's something really quite special. So, you know, I could, I could talk about why it is a better platform, and it is a better platform because, let's face it, every other YouTube competitor just wants to be YouTube, but YouTube is better at being YouTube, so they'll never win. Peertube doesn't aim to beat YouTube. It doesn't aim to outfund YouTube. Um, it, it, just, it, it would be happy just to coexist with YouTube. Watch what you want on YouTube. I'm not asking you to give up YouTube. YouTube's great. I watch tons of YouTube. I'd be a hypocrite if I thought you'd stop watching YouTube. I'm just saying there's a there's another world out there, and you can be part of both. In a world where you've got these big, dick swinging capitalist entrepreneurial institutions, it is often thought that one is eventually going to smack out the other to try and claim a monopoly. And that often is the case. You know, you see conflict amongst big companies, small companies, um, in the enterprise world, everywhere. But, um, but in the open source world, collaboration is, is encouraged. And for God's sake, if there's something we need in 2020, it's more of that. It <laughs> I feel like I say the same thing about 2019 as well, actually. Um, but it's not, you know, like it's, yeah. You know, it's, I like it. If it just like, I, you know, I, I could talk about, I could give you some facts and logic and rationale, but at the end of the day, it's, it's where the heart is. And that's what gets the videos made, I'm afraid. The heart. The head helps with the technical bits, but at the end of the day, if I'm not feeling it, I'm not going to make it. And, um, but yeah, like I've been chewing over what, how do, how do I approach PeerTube? Do I, you know, just mirror the content across? I could do, I could do, and I do. Like videos are available on on my this channel. Um, they'll they'll be available on PeerTube too. Uh, and again, you can RSS. Them. Hell, you can even BitTorrent them if you wanted to. You can download them, whatever you know. It's all good. Um, but it doesn't necessarily reflect on the fact that like PeerTube is like kind of my home now. You know, it's it's kind of where I feel. Where the heart is, where where the people are that I want to make content for, because you know they're not going to agree with me all the time. One of the things that people don't like about the Fediverse is how much people disagree with each other. I love that about the Fediverse. I love the fact that you know, like in social media, in corporate social media, and in you know the so bigger social media spaces now, take an issue, and you'll have like a down the line divide with one group of people over here with their set of talking points and another group of people over here with their set of talking points and maybe you'll have some people down the middle that are like oh I can see the benefit of the world size um, and you go to the Fediverse and it's just like blah it's like scattered everywhere everyone's got their own opinion and it's no rhyme or reason to any of it and that's how people are supposed to be we're humans you know we just you know it's great it's great and and um, yeah you know so, uh, I thought that this video would be like 10 minutes long, and I was just going to tell you where, like, I was basically, gonna, this is the information, this is like the information uh, that is, that is what I wanted to convey in this video, it's just been on the screen, and, and maybe like, you know, the, um, this, you know, like, yeah, I didn't even get through the article, did I? Um, is there something else I want to say? I think there is, and I think I'm missing it out, but I think I may be losing my uh, thread at this point. But, um, but yeah, like, uh, jo join me in the Fediverse. Um, decentralized technologies, you know, for me, uh, whilst they are systemically an improvement over corporate centralization, they're also more human and more fun. You know, uh, and that, that's kind of important, like even from like a logic and rationale point of view, because corporations are powered by money. You've got miserable people sit in a office desks doing miserable jobs so that they can bring a paycheck home. And with a lot of stuff in the open source world, you've got people who are working on stuff because they care. Yes, you've got some of, you know, and, and, and the corporate world and the open source world, they overlap quite a fair bit. That's true. 
but being a you know amateur content creator i get to, i get to choose which corner i um i i reside in i guess so anyway that's just some waffle spill you know just spilling my heart a bit but um it's been a while since i did one of these videos and i'm going to do more of them but they're probably going to mostly be on peertube where i can just sit down and have a chat with with you um because uh yeah like home is where the heart is home is not where you come from it's where you belong and i kind of feel like i belong on, on peertube these days but a lot of people are like yeah chris but you know you do have a youtube channel and you should probably tell people about you your peertube you know sometimes you talk about the fediverse but like you don't really sell it so there we go that's me all right drew selling it i'm going where the people are again fine um but yeah you know it, it, it to me especially if you're not monetizing your videos like when it comes to views yeah i don't get the same number of views on on peertube but i get enough to make it worthwhile and to be honest like yeah like a a, a, a techie video on on peertube will get me like i don't know it, 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 it varies wildly but you know a couple of hundred views let's say I mean can you imagine that filling up a room like a like a like a hundred people who who like want to hear what I've got to say how many people in the world have that privilege that's a remarkable privilege to have it's amazing even just a hundred people a hundred people on YouTube no one considers that to be a video with with any significant number of views this video will probably get a hundred views in like two hours and that won't be considered particularly impressive by most people on YouTube. If 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 two hundred people showed up to listen to me talk, I'd be thrilled. And you know, so okay. Anyway, right. This video is long enough. Um, share dot tube. Uh, also, what's great about peer tube as well is that my channel can be mirrored on other peer tube instances. So if my peer tube instance goes down. There'll be somewhere else that hosts the videos. You know, it's all it's all like that mesh network. It's not centralized by a by a company, a single company. Um and what I'd love to see is is like another company or another you know, like you know, and it, I mean it all locks into the Fediverse, so it's not like the Fediverse is like one piece of software. You know, you you've got Mastodon, Plarima, MISKey, PixelFed, uh Peertube, um Friendica. Maybe GNU Social is GNU Social still going. Uh -huh. um, but the, and and then there's also that thing that you can like subscribe to RSS feeds with with um, Mastodon as well and all that kind of stuff. Crazy. You like like the Activity Pub is just like this incredible. It's like this beehive of like all these different social networks all coming together. It's amazing. It's like you know. Can you imagine if the if if like corporate social media worked like that? To be honest. I don't want corporate. Like, you know what? You know what? Most of the world can stay on Twitter, as far as I care. You know, most of the world can actually. Twitter's pretty dead these days, isn't it? It's like it's mostly just news people. Um, you know, people can stay on Facebook. People can stay on TikTok. People can stay on Snapchat. Do people use Snapchat anymore? I don't know. I'm too old for Snapchat. People can stay on Instagram. They can stay on that. It's you know, it's other, who cares? You know what I mean? I found I found my people. I found my place. It's great. We're all weird and. Is brilliant. I love it. Anyway, right, I'm going to head off now because this, I've, like, for the, like, the last, like, 10 minutes of this video, <sighs> me just waffling on about how much I love the Fediverse now. Anyway, anyway, I'll see you over on the, um, uh, share tube. Oh, by the way, I'm a lot better at answering my comments on there as well. I'll just, just put that as a heads up. I'm sure there was something else I was going to talk about. Oh, yeah, I talk about, like, I've, I've switched the laptop over to Debian. I'll talk about my thoughts on there on, on Peertube. Well. Probably do a video at some point. Anyway, right, like Chris, get lost. Right, bye. I'm I'm done for real this time. Good glue.